talking universal credit now, and I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Town of the RLA Vice Chair. And Chris, RLA has been doing a huge amount of work with the DWP. And I think just start at the beginning, um, it, it, the rollout of universal credit has been pretty much a shambles, hasn't it? Absolutely. And everybody agrees with that, in, uh, except the DWP, of course. <laughs> yes, it's a complete shambles. It's well behind schedule. Uh, in fact, now they're, they're looking at completing this process in 2021 when initially it was going to be probably next year. But, uh, yeah, it's miles behind. And one of the issues there is the IT system, which mm -hmm. the first design had to be scrapped and they've started again. But they tell us that should be introduced at the end of this year. Now, I think one of the good um, things to talk about in this interview is the differences between universal credit and the old LHA um, system, which people are familiar with. And one of the key differences that um, landlords who've built up um, a relationship with the local authority, that's not going to be relevant anymore, is it? No, no, that's something we've we've mentioned several times. So there's a huge amount of data held by local councils on payment histories of, of tenants and so on, which would help in the changeover, but there'll be no passporting through of information from local authorities to DWP, which we think is, is an absolute, uh, well, it's an, an opportunity missed, actually. Mm -hmm. Not just for landlords, of course, but for tenants as well, because they're gonna get into arrears they could lose their home. Yeah. And we're already hearing about arrears mounting up um, with those tenants that are in receipt of universal credit as well, aren't we? What are the other key differences between LHA and UC? The key difference really for, for, for many landlords is the payment cycle. Mm -hmm. At the moment under LHA, you're paid on a four weekly cycle by your local authority and everybody's paid on the same day. Under universal credit, it will be linked into the date of application so it'll be about five to six weeks after the application is made and that could be any day of the week any week of the month and it'll be paid monthly in arrears and not four weekly so it'll be 12 payments a year not 13. Now that suggests to me that landlords are going to be have, have to be kind of more hands-on keeping sort of more eye on what's actually going on if that's the case. They are, and of course, information getting information from DWP will be much more difficult than getting from your local council. Councils, it were a bit difficult at first with LHA, but they've kind of got into the system now, and, and most people get a reasonable amount of information at a reasonable time. DWP is very different. Uh, there won't be as much access, won't be clearer access, and a lot will rely on your relationship with your tenant, actually. Mm. One of the things you have done um, through your sort of feeding back to the DWP is you've now helped ensure that there is actually a helpline um, that people can ring. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, the initial uh, design of Universal Credit was it would landlords would not be involved at all. Mm -hmm. You would have no contact. You would get no information. We've argued long and hard on this, as others have as well. Uh, and we've now got a telephone helpline and email contact, mm -hmm. although some documents will not be able to be sent by email, they'll have to be sent by post, which we're also working on to change, because mm -hmm. clearly two systems running alongside is going to cause confusion. We are hearing of landlords that are just deciding not to take um, tenants on universal credit, and clearly these are the kind of issues that you want to feed back into the DWP meetings that you're having, because you know it, it is creating a lot of problems for landlords. Sure, and that sentiment from landlords is really important when we do surveys to get those numbers over so that DWP can see a picture of how landlords are thinking, how they're reacting to universal credit, and the issues that, that put them up, move them away from taking tenants on universal credit, we want to work on with DWP so we get a better deal, basically. Now, if um, RLA members who are watching have got a, a UC problem, they can come to the advice line, can't they? Absolutely. Ring the helpline. Uh, the more information we get, the more uh, we can feed into DWP about problems and issues that could be changed, that could be modified, uh, the better system that we'll have in the future. So it's all about getting information from, from members, from landlords, about, about their experience of uh, universal credit. So, Chris, just to finish, if you could say sort of three key things that probably the vast majority of landlords that are watching this aren't aware of that could come back to bite, what would those three key things be? Well, the first thing is, when do you know that your tenant has actually applied for universal credit? At the moment, the only way to find out is to ring the council, who will say, we've never heard of that tenant, or 
that tenant we don't act for anymore. So it's having a relationship with your tenant. I think that's really important mm -hmm. stress that. as this comes over. Yes. Uh, <coughs> and, and that's not always possible, of course. Um, so it, it means changing systems. Uh, it's going to be harder to, uh, to follow this particular uh, welfare benef benefit, as I say, because the payment dates are, are all over the place. Um, the other thing is make yourself aware. There's lots of information on YouTube uh, that Universal Credit uh, DWP have put out. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of, um, th even the form filling is, is on a video clip, which I think is really helpful. Learn about it, understand how it works, and also brief your tenants on it. Mm -hmm. Give your tenants information, mention Universal Credit, they'll say what you're talking about in most cases, uh, and then explain to them, and just keep reminding them that this is coming. It may not be coming for a while for some of them, but it's worth getting, the, getting that in the heads that there's the, the, gonna be some big changes and they won't be able to use the council, the one-stop the, 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 the one shops anymore. Mm -hmm. it, they'll be going through the uh, um, uh, job center in future. Well, that's really valuable information, Chris. Thank you so much for sharing Pleasure. it with us on Property Tribes. And also, just to reiterate, please do take the RLA service, uh, the surveys, because yes. it's strength in numbers, isn't Absolutely. it? The more we can feed back to the DWP through organisations like the RLA, the more clout we have, really, as, as, a, as a body, don't we? Absolutely. What the DWP want are numbers. If we can give them numbers, percentages of, of people's sentiment, on different issues in universal credit that is absolutely key to get changes done. Fantastic. Well thank you very much Chris and Pleasure. keep up the good work. Thank you.